it's been like three years hasn't it and this year in particular stuff happened so yeah recording videos has been hard Mm. Okay, but I don't think right. Wait, don't go. Two hours later. look nice presentable so it's been what three two three years since I last saw you guys one of those years has been the fun 2020 and we're almost out of 2020 it's December and you may be wondering why what the hell am I doing back well uh, and by the title of this video you may be wondering what the hell are we going to talk about well the the thing is that actually I I, I wanted to keep on making videos, but two years ago, I um, was doing my thesis, my master thesis, and I was extremely busy. I was also working. I'm still working, but I graduated. Yay! I graduated, and um, so now I have more free time so I can go back into doing videos and two years ago I particularly wanted to do this series of videos that I'm going to do right now uh, because of one event that happened and that event was the Mexican elections during those Mexican elections we selected our new president um, and it was very not divisive, but it was an interesting moment in Mexican politics. And now, as you can see, we find ourselves again in a very, shall we say, interesting political climate again in the world for reasons. Well, not reasons, we know exactly why. So I thought. Uh, so maybe way to distract ourselves from those politics maybe we can talk about other politics uh and and i i'll decide i i decided that i was going to do those those series of videos that i didn't do back then since politics are kind of like relevant again uh, the the thing is that why is it that those Mexican elections that happened two years ago are relevant now? Well, not, they're not relevant now, but why were they relevant then, rather? Well, see, hmm. let's, 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 let's travel back in time to 2018. So in 2018, uh, the man that is now our president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, he described what he said was going to be a new era in Mexican history. He said uh, we were going to enter the 40, the four transformation. That sounds really nice, right? But 
what is the 4T and what does it have to do with that channel? If you if you're new to this channel, if you're like, holy hell, who is this woman? Hi, my name is Melina. Uh, uh, and I primarily do videos on Mexican movies and movies in general and storytelling primarily. Primarily. So what does that have to do with this? We will get into it. Um, the this has to do with a series of movies that led into the four transformation but in order to talk about the four transformation that uh the president talked about so uh I, in here we do call him uh lopez obrador but i believe in the rest of the world i i i, I really haven't He's not very much in the news, and we will see why at the end of this retrospective. I believe they call him AMLO. I don't know if they call him like that, but we're going to refer to our press, to our Mexican president as AMLO, just so you know. Uh, so uh, he referred to, he wanted his uh, Mexican period, his Mexican period, he wanted to be his presidency period, to be the the four T the four transformation, but why the four transformation? And again, why is it relevant to a movie channel? Well, let's quickly discuss the three periods. I made I made these are six three periods of change that happen in Mexican history. Well, see first. Uh, historically, Mexico has had gone through three periods of great change. The first one happened in 1810, which was the independence. Uh, this was the first time that we saw a great change in the socially and politically. Of course, because we independent, independ we independent. Oh my God, I lost my word. We became independent from uh, Spain. And we officially became, well, first became an empire for like a very small time. Uh, and then became, we became a republic. So yeah, if, if, believe it or not, we were an, uh, an empire for a very small amount of time. Then in 1958, we got the War of uh, Reforma, we call it, but you can say reform in English, I guess, which was the official time where we separated uh, the law and the state. This was the official time uh, we had, uh, we got three laws that were established at that time. And those three laws, uh, one of them was that it officially established that uh, we were going to be a secular country, that we weren't going to have the 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 church have anything to to do with the government, and also it was around the time that uh, was it then I think so it was around the time that. Uh, France tried to invade Mexico. They they were trying to get us into being a colony again. So you know, if you've ever celebrated Cinco de Mayo, this this is the time period when it happened in uh, 1958. Around this war, this is the time period that Cinco de Mayo happened. Uh, and then finally we got 1910, which is the revolution. The revolution has to be one of the most interesting times in Mexican history. Um, it drastically changed the country. And 1910 is very important in, for this channel because, uh, after 1910, you know, uh, movies started being created after 1910 uh 
the silent movies, uh, the walkies, uh, the, the talkies, sorry, a lot of, of movies started being created. So a lot of the first movies that came out here in Mexico were about the revolution. So that is a very important period in, in time when it comes to, to movies in, in general. But also much more important than that, that was the third most important period of change that happened in Mexico. That was the third T, according to, to AMLO. And then the revolution ended in 1917 with the establishment of the constitution. The revolution was a mess. That's why it's so, that's why there's so many stories about it. That's why there's so many movies about it. Because, like, everyone was fighting each other. There was, like, no quarter. The events leading up to the revolution was a dictatorship. Um, for 30 years, we had one uh, dictatorship, well, one-ish uh, there was another dictator <laughs> that was kind of dictator the the man that sold all the land to to the United States he kind of also counts like a dictator kind of uh so yeah mexican history is it's like it's a mess but yeah we the events that led up to the revolution was a dictatorship by porfirio diaz and the removal of him was very quick. It happened in a year. But the settlement of what was going to happen after the revolution, how we were going to to be uh, a new country, how were things going to be settled down, that took six years. Because... Um, Yes, that took six years because, like, uh, the revolution started in 1910. Then one year after, like, 1911, he quickly, like, was like, yeah, I'm done. He, like, he didn't, he was like, no, 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 yeah, like, here, <laughs> I'm, I, like, I'm fine. And he quickly left for France where he died. And then for seven years, like, everyone was just fighting for the power of the country. Eventually, what happened with all the characters here in the revolution is that they all just killed each other they all just if, like really they all just killed each other so this left in for 1917 to uh to the creation of the constitution that is the constitution that we have today so our, our constitution and our country and the democracy that we have it's quite young. It pretty much only has like a hundred years, if you consider all things. The the actual constitution that we're using right now, the rules that we have right now, it's quite young. It's only a hundred years, and the, the the republic as it is established, and the democracy system that we have is a hundred years, around a hundred years. It, it 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 became, it it uh it it turned a hundred years in in 2017 and uh, the thing is this from 1926 when officially we started getting new presidents to 2000 it seemed like nothing of interest happened right Come on, this is Mexico, like, come on. <laughs> so, this is where movies come in and where eventually all these events that happen left, uh, lead, sorry, to the 4T or the, the, the eventual selection the eventual uh selection the eventual election of amlo as president all these events that happened from 1926 around around 2026 20, i believe when, when when the the first party that was formed after the revolution all those events all that that happened from then 
until the elections of 2018, that, that's what it led to AMLO being president today. That is the story we want to cover because it's like it's made in it was made into a series of movies. Uh, it was made into a tetralogy, which is four movies by uh, director Luis Estrada. So Luis Estrada is a director, screenwriter, producer. He's the son of Jose Estrada. Jose Estrada was uh, Jose El Perro Estrada. He uh, he also was a, a director and a producer. And he, uh, Luis Estrada is known for being a, a, a director and a movie maker that um, is very politically inclined with his movies, particularly because he started with uh, with this th th tetralogy, pretty much. So he made this tetralogy that kind of covers from the period of 1926 to the elections of 2012. So it's this whole period from before AMLO became a president. And you know, honestly, like after AMLO like gets out of office, I don't know if he's going to do another movie that's kind of like included in in this whole like tetralogy or saga that he has. Uh, but so far, we only have four movies. So what happened in in that period of time what happened in this almost like 80 years that demanded that movies were made of them well so let's talk about the two what do i make making the numbers with my two hands because it, it this it doesn't this is not two this is four the, what what were the two parties that were made uh in the 1926, I, I don't say 1917, I say 1926 because that's officially when like democracy, democracy in Mexico like, kind of like kick-started. So in 1926, officially, it had another name first, but the name that stuck, it was PRI. It was Partido Revolucionario Institucional. And uh, I'm going to see, I'm still not sure because I'm recording this first. But if I find the clip of the joke, I'm going to put it right here. Yo digo que el narco ya debería gobernar con un partido narco. Ahí no nos faltaría dinero. O sea, si tenemos cosas tan tontas como revolución e institución en un mismo concepto que es el Partido Revolucionario Institucional, que es como el partido de la dictadura democrática. Pues que hagan el partido narco democrático, ¿no? So the the thing about uh, PRI was that they had their first president was Lázaro Cárdenas. Lázaro Cárdenas was a president that did a lot of great things for the country. So they started off with the right foot, right? They started out with the right foot and everyone really liked them. So the next... Uh, our presidency uh, uh, period only lasts six years and we have no re-election because of what happened with the dictatorship. We have no option for re-election. The re-election here in Mexico is like pff, out the window. Four presidents for uh, the president of the country. I think governors and uh, mayors can re-elect at least once. But then um, something happened. Uh, let's look at the rest of the presidents that went after Lázaro Cárdenas till the year 2000. So we have, come on down. We have Manuel Avina. He's from the party. Pri. Miguel Alemán. Pri. Adolfo Ruiz. Pri. Adolfo López Mateos. Pri. Gustavo Díaz Ordaz, Pri, also Gustavo Díaz Ordaz, he did some really heinous shit that we will need to discuss eventually. There's also a movie. As long as there is a movie, we can discuss it on this show, so we will be seeing you again, Mr. Ordaz. Uh, Luis Echeverria, Pri, López Portillo, Pri, Miguel de la Madrid, Pri, Carlos Salinas y Gortaris, Pri, 
Now, this is where things were starting to get... We had Luis Colosio. Luis Colosio was the nominee for uh, uh, the, the pre party. But as you can see, things were looking... How do they say nowadays the kids on the street? Um, sus. They were looking a bit sus. Um, all the president candidates so far from the last 70 years in Mexico had been from the pre-party. During the first period, during the first, like what? 20, 30 years, the country was going okay. But during the, like I said, with uh, Diaz Ordaz, shit went down. Then again, with Miguel de la Madrid, shit went down. And with Salinas y Gortari, shit really went down. What I'm trying to say is that they were presidents from this party, but they weren't very good presidents. And a lot of not very good things were starting to happen in the country. And a lot of corruption started to come to the scenes. So Luis Colosio, who was the nominee for the party, came around and he was like, I'm going to be different. Honestly, he was like, I'm going to be different, which, you know, is all like the political schlock that you may hope to hear from a, politi a politician. But he was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like there's there's stuff going on and I'm going to be different and I'm going to show you. And then on live TV in an interview, he got assassinated. That for all Mexicans was like, well... So, does that mean that in the elections of 1994, we finally got a, a, a someone from a different party? No! His substitute, Ernesto Cedillo, was the president in the elections of 1994. Ah, how nice. So, for 70 years, the same uh, members of the same party were selected as presidents and this meant that for 70 years we were uh, in what has been colloquially called the perfect dictatorship because we were under the control of what is the party not under one person but the party so Luis Estrada made his first movie about this, which is what is going to be our first episode. This is going to be just the introduction episode, which we're, we're seeing the background of it. And our first episode is going to be about the first movie that he made about this corruption that happened. Uh, and that is La Ley de Herodes. Ah. El presidente municipal dijo, para que veas que la revolución le hace justicia a gente como tú. Mr. Robert, do you think that um, democracy is the solution for countries like Mexico? No, 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 no. We Americans also like dictatorships like yours. ¿Qué dijo, doctor? Dice que en los Estados Unidos creen que somos una dictadura. La dictadura perfecta. La ley de Herodes doesn't really take place at the end of the regimen of the 70 years, but rather kind of in the middle, like around middle beginning and how the corruption in the party happened. Then in 2000, after, you know, they, so they, the assassination of Colosio happened. And then in 2000, we got tired. It was time. It was the millennium. It was the new century. It was the 2000s. It was time. We wanted a change, a change. If you're Mexican and I do this and I say change, 
this was this was our yes we can we wanted the change yes and it came and his name was Fox <laughs> and it sucked <laughs> oh god so we got Fox he was from so I was saying there were two parties right the main um, uh, adversary, you can say, is like Republicans and Democrats. But he was like Republicans. He was the conservative. And uh, uh, Partido Acción Nacional, which is PAN, uh, was the, the Democrats. But it used to be the Democrats. Nowadays, it's like they're the same. Like, it doesn't matter. They, they really have no difference between them. Uh, but um, back then, because uh, Pan was the primary opposition of PRI, they were the the, the Democrats. So just to just to kind of give you like an example, so you can have like a shorthand and an idea of what I mean. Um, but um, we got Fox. And the thing with Fox is that he meant well, but he got literally more than he could shoo off. He was given a country that was made shreds, full of corruption, uh, you know, and he wasn't that bright. <laughs> he wasn't that bright, and he was involved in a couple of scandals. And let's just say that he didn't make the country way worse, but he certainly didn't make it better. So the change that we were expected never happened. One of the funniest things that Fox ever did is that he was best friends with Bush. He was a divorced president, which is unheard of. You know, all the presidents had this you know, conservative image of being married and he was divorced and he married while being in office and he became like his whole image was that of him being with his wife, Marta Sagun. They, they were like, oh, it's me and Martita. And oh, it, it was a bit cringe. And the other scandal that they had is that they were like splurring splush mm. they spent a lot of money on decorating what is our white house which is called the uh, mansion de los pinos uh they wasted like a lot of money on like decorative stuff like curtains and like, like sta stationary stuff and particularly in towels like, towel gate became a thing back then. Like, just because they spent a shit lot of money on towels and the whole country was, like, dying of hunger and they were spending a shit lot of money on towels. It's like, oh, God. And that... And he left us a lot of funny, funny quotes. If I may.